here's a throwing challenge for you. Take a dart, close your eyes, and throw it at a square dartboard with a circle inside, and after throwing enough darts completely randomly, you'll somehow calculate one of mathematics' most famous constants, pi to incredible accuracy. It sounds impossible, right? How could random throws at a board possibly tell us anything meaningful about the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter? And yet this is exactly what happens when we use a technique called Monte Carlo simulation, a method so powerful that it's used everywhere from predicting stock prices to designing nuclear reactors. The name Monte Carlo comes from the famous casino in Monaco. And that's no accident because this whole method is based on the same principles that govern games of chance. Think about flipping a coin. If you flip it once, you have no idea whether it'll land heads or tails. But if you flip it a hundred times, you can be pretty confident you'll get close to 50 heads and 50 tails. This transformation from unpredictability to predictability is the heart of Monte Carlo. And it turns out we can use this same principle to solve problems that would be incredibly difficult or even impossible to solve any other way. Let me show you how this works with our dart throwing example. We have a square with sides of length 2 and a circle inside with radius 1, which means the area of the circle is p times r squared, which equals pi, and the area of the square is 2 times 2, which equals 4. Now, here's where it gets clever. The ratio of the circle's area to the square's area is pi divided by 4, and this ratio also tells us what fraction of randomly thrown darts should land inside the circle versus the total number thrown at the square. So we start throwing darts randomly at our board, and we keep track of two numbers, how many land inside the circle and how many we've thrown total. And how can we approximate pi from that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We look at the area of the circle and the square, and we take their ratio, which in this case gives us pi divided by 4. So we'd expect that the ratio between the number of darts inside divided by the total darts to also be pi divided by 4. So pi will be equal to 4 multiplied by the number of darts inside divided by the total darts. Now, let's start the simulation. After just 10 throws, our estimate would usually be pretty far off, but as we throw more and more darts, something remarkable happens. With 100 darts, we're getting closer, probably within an error range between 0.1 and 0.2. And with 1000 darts, we might be at 3.14, incredibly close to the true value of pi. This convergence isn't luck or magic, it's guaranteed by something called the law of large numbers which tells us that as we take more and more random samples, our observed frequency will get closer and closer to the true probability. It's like nature has this built-in mechanism where randomness, when you have enough of it, becomes predictable. And this principle doesn't just work for calculating pi, it works for solving an enormous range of problems that would otherwise be mathematically intractable. The real beauty of Monte Carlo is its simplicity. You take a complex problem, find a way to represent it with random sampling, generate lots of random samples, count your successes, and then let the patterns emerge naturally. What started at Los Alamos National Laboratory during the Manhattan Project as a way to model neutron diffusion has become one of the most versatile problem-solving tools we have. And here's the paradox that makes it all work. Randomness plus repetition equals certainty. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.